Welcome back to Business Focus on TV3. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And we're very interactive as well, so let's hear from you. My guest this evening is the founder of PFM Tax. And this is what he's currently doing and also contributing to the discourse and proposing worthy alternative for government in terms of economic policy, not just Ghana, but across the continent. But most importantly for the conversation this evening, he's a former finance minister of the Republic of Ghana. This is Seth Tekwe. I thank you for time. Good evening to you. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening to your viewers and I believe listeners as well. Absolutely. And, and this is the first time we are, we are sitting in this new year. So, Happy New Year's in advance. Yeah, I mean, happy New Year's. Uh, it's well, already January. You've been working. Lots, you, you had an engagement with, with PFM tax on specific issues of economic concern. And the recent one was on the e-levy and, and tax policy. But beyond that, what has <coughs> been the focus outside finance ministry? Um, well, as, as you rightly pointed out, the uh, uh, PFM tax, the full name is PFM Tax Africa Network. Um, mm. So it's developmental, but it's going to be focusing on, you know, the homeland, Ghana. Mm -hmm. But also we will be, you know, um, if you go to our website, we've started, you know, um, putting our stories about other countries and what is going on globally. Mm -hmm. uh, those who follow my uh, Twitter handle and the uh, limited Facebook would see the trend where we are going. Mm -hmm. But the main focus, as the name implies, is public financial management. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what PFM is, you know, means. Uh, and even though PFM includes taxation, um, normally PFM is associated with expenditure, so we add the tax. And you can see that when you talk about tax or revenue and and then uh, you talk about expenditure, mm -hmm. you are basically talking about the beginning part of the budget <laughs> or fiscal management. And so um, that is where we want to focus. We want to be very focused. But it doesn't mean that we don't cover, you know, other things like the monetary mm -hmm. policy trends because they are interrelated. Yeah. So that's what we do. That's I, what I've been doing generally. I, I, I see. Uh, and it's important you make this point about expenditure and all because okay. just about 17 hours ago you tweeted that our debt GDP ratio is to hit 83% or more. With the question mark. At end of 2021, <laughs> despite recent official protests, question mark. Bank of Ghana's financial and economic data report puts the level at 78.4%. Yes. As at the end of November 2021. Yes. But excluding the bailout that, that is in the note. Yes. The lowest monthly debt amount is 3.4%, which added for December 2021, it takes you to 81.8%. This is despite the, the official protests. You, this, this is the tweet that just came from you. Well, yes, yeah, so we are, what we normally also do is to, to use official statistics. And then, so if we take it, let's say in the three segments, mm -hmm. uh, Bank of Ghana says that our debt, and it's in today's MPC, they mm -hmm. repeated it, is um, on their website. Is um, eighty. Um, That's eighty one. Seven, no, seventy. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Point, thank you. Yes, yeah, seventy-eight point four percent. I'm looking at the website of the Bank of Ghana now. Yes. Yes, seventy-eight point okay. four percent. Seventy-eight point four percent. But if you look at, you know, the footnotes or the notes to that, it says it excludes bailout bail costs. So what we do, what we did was to go to the budget and see what is the bailout cost, you know, going mm -hmm. to the end of the year. And so we take the two statements, the two, the budget and this one, because this is not very explicit on the budget, True. you know. So you go to other sources, and the bill out there is uh, estimated between five to eight, you know, billion, which gives you around one percent, one point something percent of GDP. So if you add it, you know, to seventy-eight point, then you add that. that We're gives exceeding you, the eighty percent. Yes. And debt a, to GDP. Yes. And the Bank of Ghana is saying it is it's exclusive. But remember, we are talking about the figure that is end November. Mm. So we go back and look at, because Bank of Ghana gives the monthly. So we see that from the beginning of the year, they were borrowing 
at four point, the debt was increased at four percent. Then it tapered to between three point five and three point four. So we take the minimum, we want to be conservative. So we take the three point four and say that if this is what we've been doing through the month, then let's assume that, that December will be three point four. And so if you add it to the eighty which you just got, that puts you at twenty three. So just to make this wrong, because of, uh, the Fitch ratings has a direct link. In fact, they made reference to the growing debt situation, that unsustainable <coughs> debt levels. I'm just going to show you the reasons why um, Fitch downgraded Ghana's long-term foreign currency issuer default a rating. That's the idea from B to B minus with a negative outlook. Take a look at this. This is what Fitch said. These are the reasons. It comes in the context of uncertainty about the government's ability to stabilize debt and against a backdrop of tightening global financing conditions, Ghana's ability to deliver on planned fiscal consolidation efforts could be hindered by the heavier reliance on domestic debt issuance with higher interest costs. <clears throat> this is the reason which which gave. So maybe we can take it one after the other. Uh, the first one, um, they are saying that um, um, our debt seems to be rising. Okay. And, and the evidence is what we, we have just gone through. Yes, the evidence is we have, what we have been talking and you know that it has been increasing. And if you, I, I left out things like um, in arriving at a deficit, for example, which I use, um, the provision for deficit in the budget is 1.9%. Mm -hmm. We said 1.9 billion. Do we really believe that, you know, the arrears in the system today is only 1.9 billion? You doubt that? And it's that? Just decreasing. Well, just look at, you know, some, you know, sometimes officials make some statements here and there. Um, there was some admission that what is owed to contractors alone is between three to five billion. Mm -hmm. I believe that came across that statement. Yes. yes. Um, we've been talking about uh, releases to free SHS and others which has not yet, you know, materialized. Um, and uh, so when you pick some of these you know, anecdotes, uh, the, the, the arrears could be, could be underestimated. And moreover, when with the, against the tightness, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be falling from 3.2 or so percent to 1.9. You know, so you make a little adjustment there, and these are the distance. Now, but more importantly, we know it in Ghana today, when Fitch says that debt may be going up, we know it that all our revenue, right, mind you, when we talk about total revenue covering two items, compensation and interest, it doesn't include principal. But note that we are taking gross revenue before statutory funds have been taken out, before <laughs> most people don't look at that. So, and so if those are obligations, so definitely the company is going to borrow. Then they come to the second factor, and they say global factors, right? What mm -hmm. are the global factors? I mean, the NPC statement, they hint at, you know, um, central banks, the big ones, including the Federal Reserve, going to be inter increasing interest rates, mm -hmm. right? Bank mm -hmm. of the Bank of England has already started. European Union is a big coy about it. But we know that the trajectory against inflation is going up in the U.S. at 7%, you know, 30-year high, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the market today, you are not going to get the yields or the interest rates which you were borrowing. Right. Because you are borrowing from those markets. Sure. So there will be pressure. And your interest rate is already to the hilt, right? So you're going to be adding to it. Then they, they talk about you know, the domestic pressure. So mm -hmm. remember, we couldn't go to the market in, in December for the remaining two billion, which was to refinance, basically. We've done some refinance. The, 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 the existing debt. The existing debt, right? So you don't want to default, right? So if you don't want to default, what do you do? You come to your domestic market. And then the government then begins to compete, you know, with the private sector. Right, and, th th and then and that will push the private sector exactly, in the, in and that, that leads to increase in interest rate. And if you look at the NPC statement, which I haven't reviewed, you know, thoroughly, mm -hmm. but I always look at the fiscal elements. You could see treasury bill raises is stabilized still somewhat, mm -hmm. with even a drop in the, according to the NPC. But the uh, the interest rates. So we had a graph when we did that presentation to show that the medium term rates, when no residents used to participate, and the rest has been going. That's our three year, five year. 
and other domestic bonds. Those interest rates are going up. So that's what the point they are talking about are domestic. And then they point to the external vulnerabilities. Yes, you know, how is all this going to impact, you know, um, reserves? Because we're talking about lack of, you know, money to support. Mm -hmm. So are we going to depend on our reserves to be meeting interest rates? Which reserves, right? Um, if you have five years or six years of reserves, remember the composition of our reserves, for example, includes even our petroleum funds, you know, which we show in the budget and therefore is part of the core reserves of the central bank. So are we heading there? Is there enough of cocoa money left? We couldn't do bonds which normally provide. So these are some of the trajectory which they use, you know, to tell you, look, where you are going. You know, and, and some of the bonds issued three, four, five years ago are maturing this year. Sure. That's, just, that's So they see the trajectory. So they are maturing this year. And then you have your zero coupon maturing in 2025. I mean, how dire is this? I, I, I want to show you that this is what Bloomberg put out. And, and I know this is something that you are seeing. <clears throat> I, I captured it on the Bloomberg website, um, the analysis there. You see that gray area? That's right, yes. Th that, that depicts... Uh, the, the situation as of January 2022 as we have it. Yes. And the finance minister is saying that the Fitch downgrade and what we are seeing on the screen now is a foreshadow of what is to come if, for instance, the E-Levy is, is not passed. What is the specific impact we, we, we will have on the situation as, as we've seen now? Look, what is the context? The deficit according to the budget, mm -hmm. is 37 billion. Yes. Right? For the 2022 budget. Yes. But if you so go to the appendix, let me just, is one clarification. If you go to the appendix, you will see that the deficit, you know, we're just talking about cash, arrears, and whatever, ended at 37%, 37 billion, right? Mm -hmm. Then, when you go to the food, remember, it excludes bailout costs. But when you go to the footnotes where they normally put the bail out costs. That deficit that should, have, that should have been brought down, you know, at 37%, was brought down at 32, right? 32. 32. Why? So you add the five and you get the same 37. 37. If the natural thing is to bring down 37, right, and then add the five, as we would normally have done, then our deficit is around 40, 40, 43, 45. Okay, that's the first thing. But the point I'm making is that, and this is financing that is required after compensation and interest has taken revenue, again, before statutory funds and others. Everything else is dependent on loan. Okay, so the question is, what is the 7 billion in relation, you know, to this 45? So and how can that become the, you know, <laughs> the, the main thing that would save, you know, the budget. When you do not have access to the markets to borrow, you know, the, it's closing. We mm -hmm. do have access. Of course, you will always have access. But if you are willing to pay the rate, interest, and the rest. So with this, you know, uh, uh, that's why I have said that the seven billion from the E-Levy, uh, in terms of resolving our problems, is, is overrated. I see it more in terms of agent liquidity that will be needed because it's going to be cash. It's all like profit tax, which will have to wait for the quarter or wait for, mm -hmm. but this could be coming in, you know, periodically. So I see more in terms of liquidity than in resolving the total problems that we have. So you, you, you say, you put it that the E-Levy, <coughs> in terms of its potential to solve the, the, the situation we have now, the economy is overrated. I mean, 7 billion or 6.9 there about, what, what let difference me give, would it make? Let me give you a reason. The deficit of 37, mm -hmm. if you like, or 43, as you know, some of us are arguing, includes the portion of the IMF SDR. We are using it to finance the deficit because it wasn't shown when the money was coming in as a revenue. It wasn't shown? You are no, yes, you don't see it. I stand for credit. If you go to the appendix, look at the details and, and see whether the IMF, you know, is there. And therefore, it wasn't shown in the expenditure as to how we are going to use that money. Then you go to the appendix and you see it as financing. So first point, it is financing 
expenditure. So we are not, we've gotten this money, which is appreciation of our position, you know, our investment in the fund. Mm -hmm. That one is for us. It's not like the COVID loan, you know, and what are we doing with it? One billion. <laughs> we don't have a structure to show. Maybe in showing financing, it may be what is financing capital. I give them, I give that. But the point I'm making is that that has been consumed too. The seven billion you are talking about is part of the hundred already. It's part of the hundred point five they talk about. Yes, part of the hundred point five. Okay, so and that and, and so sorry, so it has already been included in arriving at the deficit that you are talking about. The, the thirty seven billion deficit. Yes. The 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 six point nine billion is. Yes, so it's not the, like a new resource that is coming. You know, to help us out of financing 37. Okay, so just for the benefit of our viewers, this 100.5 billion, and let me show this on the screen right now, the revenue forecast or projection for 2022 as captured in the 2022 budget. Yes. Take a look at this. According to the 2022 budget revenue expenditure target, the revenue 100.5 you see there. Yes. You're saying that the 6.9 billion expected from the e-levy is captured in this 100.5. It's captured in the 100.5. <laughs> and the expenditure we are spending more. That's 137.5 billion. So there's a deficit of 37 billion. And you're saying you are challenging the 37 billion deficit. That it will be more than that. Yeah, it's more than that. Based on some correction, unless of course we are saying that, given given our current situation, we are going to be paying some of the pass, you know, uh, 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 extra bond loans and the rest. That's the only way you will get it will come, it should, it should be a, a, a subtraction. I want you to drill down this point about the 6.9 billion expected from the e-levy already captured in the revenue expected. Now, let me the, uh, uh, go as, to, as, as yeah, let me, let me build down. Mm -hmm. So, if you go to Appendix 3, okay. right, the details are given. So, you have you know, the 100.5 made up of domestic revenue, 99.5, mm -hmm. and then inclusive of the domestic is tax of 80.2. Yes. And then under tax revenue, you have that the 80 is broken into taxes on income and then taxes on domestic. And then you go down for that, you go to, and then, okay, so when you come to taxes on domestic goods and services, right, mm -hmm. which is giving you 36 yes. point zero, you know, billion, billion. the components are this, excise 6.1 or 6.2, VAT 14.5, national health insurance 3.3, that's a levy, get fund levy 3.3, communication service tax, 651 million. The next item is e transactions levy 6.9. So it is captured in the footnote. I see it. So that's just for it's the It's captured in the appendix. Append yes. And a number of things that you will not see in the budget statement for the benefit of our viewers. Make some time you go to the appendix, it has further detail. Yes, and that's where we focus of what on, you at BFM Tax Africa. Yes. You, you, you would not see in <laughs> some of the values stated in the budget. So if you're dealing with the values stated in whole, as you just saw on the screen, 100.5 billion, a breakdown of that you would see in the appendix. And I'm, I'm actually just seeing it there. That okay, we've gone to it, yes. The, yes, the e-levy is captured as yes. part of the 100.5 billion yes. Revenue expected. Yeah, before the COVID year. health levy. So what does it mean if it doesn't go through? What does it mean? It, it, of course, it increases the deficit because revenue will be lower. So revenue will go down from 100, you know, to 93. And, and, the, and the six will increase the 37 or 43. And so if it increases the 43, then our deficit is 50. And at 50, are you following the, what I'm saying? Yes. As 50... Remember, it's close to what GRA has just brought in. We say they've met their, mark, their targets, 57. <laughs> Precisely. And yeah. in fact, they, said they, they exceeded so the So the entire GRA, opportunity. yes. So what we need is we need the revenue for the entire GRA, you know, to, you know, to meet the deficit. 
So and that's all going to be borrowed. <laughs> so we are going to borrow to the extent that GRA has raised revenue. So, now let, let, let me let me let me just say something in, mm -hmm. in fairness. Uh, Ghana's budget has always been tight. I don't want to sit here and you know pretend that you know yeah uh, this is it's it's always been tight, you know. But then um, you could see that some progress at various times you know are made uh, over time. So for example, uh, um, the deficit was brought down when we set oil revenue aside to pay for the first sovereign bond and to pay for some of the debt and others you saw it if you see that graph at the last time i was here we yes. we showed it you see that the rate of borrowing was going down, down. and then and, and i quoted from the debt management report uh, what we are seeing as a feature you see both interest rate debt and what are going, up. going up yes and so this is a picture you know feature say so if you don't pass it so you can see the need, the urgency around it. Um, despite what we believe are various distortions and, you know, it's if not that this 11 doesn't go through, it will increase the already <laughs> unsustainable debt levels yes. by that figure. Yes, so if you adjust it to 43, as I'm saying, mm -hmm. and the yield levy is 7, you add, it will increase the deficit by 7, and that takes your deficit to 50. And, and, and the GRA was able to collect just about 57.32 billion. Yes, in and that is one. Yes, and it took a lot because if you look at if you look at the first three quarters, and again there's some normalcy about the last quarter because of Christmas and others bringing revenue, mm -hmm. but it jumped from an average collection. It means that GRA what GRA did was to jump from an average collection of about 11 or 12 per quarter to 18. I think 16 or 17, yeah. And that's how can they were able to. So all that money in three months. Now, when you collect all that money in three months, uh, it somewhat has an impact on what which is normally lean. And now the, the target for 2022 has been increased to 80.3 billion. 80.3 billion. Well, that's another issue. You know, so, we, uh, um, so if, if you take... The engine is GRA, so I always like to take, mm -hmm. yes, so you are quoting the GRA 80. So 57, and you have to collect 80. 80.3. Yes, that's 30. Significant jump in a year. Close to 30. About, um, about 20, 20, 23 20, 20, 20, 26, 26 billion. Yes, that's right. 26 billion increase. Yeah. And so you have to go, what we then do is to go back and look at the rate of increases, mm -hmm. which I didn't bring that, 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 that data. But you, you, you're saying that, is this a realistic target or, or, or one that the GRA will struggle to meet? Well, so to put it more optimistically, they will struggle to meet. They will struggle to <laughs> yeah, meet. Yeah, from what you said, whether it's impossible or... Yeah, I prefer I, I, to just say... I, I, I didn't want to say it is impossible. <laughs> that's why I... I they, would it be challenging for them to meet this yeah, 8.3 yeah. billion? Yes, GRA has a way with that. You know, but, you know, there were reforms that were taking place. You know, we created GRA itself. Mm -hmm. used to be the Revenue Agency's governing board. Yes. You know, we merged VAT, you know, and, and IRS... We revamped the laws, yes. you know, and did quite a number of things. But what was left to be done is to focus on the domestic tax offices. And in fact, that... that which is, is, sorry, which is the equivalent of outcomes. That's the stage where we were. I see. For the domestic, you know, tax. And so, that has delayed. You, you make reference to that, and that's a number of things. The, the tax loss project in 2010, I recall. This tax loss project that you embarked on, in 2010, as well, yes. and, and to, to reform some of the laws, um, and then also introduce the new taxes during that particular period um, that, that we saw. I just want to show our viewers what, what I'm talking about with this tax loss project. Yes. Some of the major tax laws that you enacted within that period, the Value Added Tax Act 2013, as amended, Value Added Tax Regulations 2016, Income Tax Act 2015, the Income Tax Regulations 2016, the Customs Act 2015, a number of things that you, you, you looked at. Another significant one is excise. You know, people often leave excise. Mm -hmm. Why? Because excise used to be buried in the old sales tax, which is now VAT, and in the Customs Tariff Session. But excise is both on domestic and on import, unlike tariffs. So what we did was to carve out a new excise law. I you see. know, so that, yes, so for the first time, we had a new excise law. But let me give you the rationale for this. 
Let me take just two in the interest yes. of time. Yes. You see, what you have is a value added tax, mm -hmm. 2013. The old act was value added tax, 1998, when the VAT was reintroduced. Then you come to the Income Tax Act. The old act, you know, was uh, 2003. After SMC D5, which was 70, 1975, and they were being amended and amended and amended. And then the customs, I'm thinking the three big ones. Mm -hmm. The Customs Act, in actual fact, was a PNDC law, you know, 330. A PNDC law? And yes, and then it was, yes, and yes, it was, the name was changed to SEPS Management into Bracket Management Act. So we, and, and these were errors before you had this e levy mm -hmm. and all those before the services sector became the largest sector of the economy. So if you take VAT, for example, the controversy this is the rationale. You see, when you say expand the tax base, it's not just expanding it by the roadside. It is expanding it to cover new economy. Agriculture ceased, long ceased to become, you know, uh, the largest share of GDP, which is why we rebase, which mm -hmm. is why Bank of Ghana changed the basket. Right. Yet the biggest sector today, services, was outside the VAT. So we did a financial sector. We are coming to e, e, e levy. Yes. So what we did was to say, let us bring the financial sector now into the tax base. So we had various reviews, for example, with customs, we did some reviews of exemptions, and I, which led to the uh, draft exemptions act, which is yet to be, to be passed. Mm -hmm. So when we did this, we said, the, the services sector that is growing, uh, the writing of the of, of VAT is not like the sales tax. And the sales tax, you list the services that has to be taxed. Right. So that's Act, Act 500, uh, services provided by financial analysts, financial advisors, you know. You see, we are talking about finance. Mm -hmm. So we said, given this, let's bring in the, the financial sector, the non core. The no, reason being no. that when, and that takes us to some of the arguments I'm making, we didn't bring in interest because interest is core. The interest is not expenditure. VAT is a tax on expenditure. Mm -hmm. Interest is you have gone to the bank, right, and you have put your mm -hmm. money in. So we didn't want to put the VAT on it. The VAT was on non core, which is the fees the, the bank charges you, which has, is in our sales tax act. I'm talking about this is a sales tax act of 19. Uh, 1995, mm -hmm. after the VAT was cancelled, right? You know, so these fees were there, but it had expanded. Uh, there were no ATM, there were none, and the mm -hmm. banks were charging all of this, right? So we brought all this in, and they were removed in 2017 with funfair. <laughs> and now we are bringing in a levy, which is taxing the savings that was excluded, you know, by the VAT. That's what the e-levy is going to do? Yeah, that's what it's going to do. So, you see, <laughs> one of the aims of this tax loss project in 2010 was to broaden the tax base, make them more user-friendly, enhance efficiency, facilitate compliance and, and, and others. But to bring them into the new era, when all these laws which I mentioned earlier on, well, there was nothing like petroleum. <laughs> so then that leads to the next question about expanding the tax. One of the reasons why the finance minister says this e is coming is because just about 10% of the population pay taxes. And we've been talking about expanding the tax net for only God knows how long. And so we continuously introduce these indirect taxes as a way of roping in the people who are not paying taxes and thereby increasing the burden of those who are already paying the taxes. I mean, is there any justification for this path that we are on that look about 90% of tax revenue is from the Bitakara region. So many people are not paying taxes. So instead of going through the process of the hard way of identifying the taxable population that's not paying taxes, rather take the route of introducing indirect taxes that affects everyone, like the e -Levy. Well. E levy affects everyone, right? But is it a fair tax? Is, is a it question. A fair tax? Yes, it's a question. And What's is it? Is it? It's not. And it is. It is taxing savings, and you don't tax savings. Let me give you a reason why. Mm -hmm. um, if you are paid, 
It's a cancer. <laughs> and the accountant here, with the PAYE, you don't even have an option. Yes. The law says you should divide PAYE. So 100, PAYE 10. How much do you have left? Take home, as we say. Forget about that, that deductions. 90. That's the 90 you've left in the bank. It's been taxed already. <laughs> right? TV3. The shareholders, through your hard work, <laughs> hard work, you make profit. They pay corporate income tax. What you are paying is personal income tax, not income tax. Right? So they pay corporate income tax. Right? To mm -hmm. What is left? They put in. Last time I was here, we didn't have this beautiful. Yes. yes. So they want to invest in these things. Their money which is left, which they didn't take out as dividend. Right? So imagine they put it there, top it with some loan. Right? Mm -hmm. Get, you know, um, a contractor. This is not Rosa, because remember the banks are big into it. Yes. So they ask they are using Momo instead of where they had to set up their own mechanism. The reason you have electronic and everybody is using including banks is because they don't have to set up, you know, their network independently as they used to. Sure. And there's a big company called MTN, which is all over Ghana. Mm -hmm. So if they want to pay the contractor, they just use that means instead of their own, which was not being taxed. Mm -hmm. So they take the savings after you have paid the corporate income tax or after you have taken the PIT, they send it. Right? Is this new income? Oh. Yeah. So you are taxing, you are taxing loan. You come for a loan, it's being sent to somebody to do a work, and you are taxing the loan. Right? You've earned your income, you've paid your 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 taxes dutifully, as you know, you know, and then you transfer it, and it's being taxed. You see, when the owners of TV3 use the money they transfer, right? Mm -hmm. To come and do these nice things and you become effective and your adverts increase, your sponsorships increase. Next year, you pay more corporate income tax. There's nothing wrong with it. You have invested the savings, mm -hmm. so you pay more yeah. corporate income tax. But what we are taxing now is the way with that for the investment, which we have which, never done. Which has the probability of stifling the investment to lead to increased production. Precisely. And remember, we are using big business. Somebody selling roadside on the table decides to go and do, you know, a sieve, you know, hygiene, you know, COVID. We all want, don't want, you know. So he's educated, so I want to look nice on the table so that customers will have confidence that I'm selling a hygienic condition. So. Let's say you take, assuming many of us are wives who are trading, so you give part of your salary and the profit that they earn. Yeah. So the capital finishes, and they are doing momo. True. So you transfer the money. What are you taxing? The capital savings which I have put to do the sieve is what you are taxing. I want to take a listen to the finance minister talking about the justification for this <clears throat> e levy. Take a look. With that background, let me share with you why we need the e-levy, which is one of the key tax measures of our 2022 budget. We are at a stage in our national development where we must all play our part and put our shoulders to the wheel. Where Greater Accra is responsible for 90% of revenues, it's not the way to burden share. Where property taxes are laughable is not the way to go. Where the wealthy talk about regressive taxes to detract from their own non-payment is not the way to go. We simply cannot build forward better of a system where everyone takes and most do not give back. The two major sources of income to pay for expenditure for any government are taxes and borrowing. The balance will tilt one way or the other, depending on the capacity to mobilize revenues. So that's the finance minister. As earlier indicated, I mean, the revenue we expect to generate internally, the 100.5 billion 
the foreign finance minister has established that we are going to use that to pay compensation, that salaries and the interest on existing loans. And remember that some of the loans and bonds we procured years back are maturing this year, so it's going to compound the existing problem as we have it. That's the finance minister. This is the justification for the e levy. Your reaction to this? <laughs> I just the, the issues that he he he's out, outlined. One, the number of people paying taxes he says limited to greater accuracy about 90 percent of them and two property 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 rate or property taxes not being effectively collected and then they're rich talking about this because they don't want to pay taxes i mean that is a perpetual responsibility of you know diary right mm -hmm. i think the flip question is what proportion of the GDP comes from within a crater mine cliff? <laughs> right. If output is in proportion to the productivity of an area, I'm asking you, compare a crater mine to 40 miles, my hometown somewhere. <laughs> what is the volume of economic activity? So some of it is just a natural cause of the development, mm. right? Am I saying that people who are on the outskirts are down and other places should not pay taxes? No. But I'm saying that the concentration of business in every national capital is well known region. So you go, that's why Hollywood, you know, is, 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 is big. That's why New York is big. That's why London <laughs> is the financial center of the world by virtue of you know, the axis where it's located, colonialism, seafaring, and all those, you know. Yes, yeah, so I do appreciate that. But I think we, we you know, I, I think the more important point which he makes, which I agree, are the people in Accra who are making big money and are not paying taxes. And that is why I hear it's been dismantled. That's why we said, okay, uh, they are complex, they are sophisticated. They do tax evasion. Well, not all of them, some of them, right? Some are paid legitimate tax, yes. Let's have a large taxpayer office. So it's part of the reforms mm -hmm. to deal with those people. Because GRA cannot, you know, and then let's have a medium taxpayer office. Right? And these offices are about 20, 22. GRA had at the time nearly 60. Right? So if you turn away, those offices were located in the large taxpayer office was in Accra with an outlet in Kumasi. Hmm. It wasn't even in Tamale. It's the million taxpayer offices that were big in those places. Many regional capitals didn't even have large taxpayer offices. Why? Because the predominant large payers were in Accra Tema. And then now we would have probably gone to, you know, but even if you go and get oil from second day, Takra day, and whatever, yeah, right? The headquarters for Talu is here. And this is where they will count. So it will go to Greater Accra. So we need a disaggregation of that data. We need to, yes. To, to, to justify the claim uh, yeah, about... Uh, mo yes, more importantly, you see the, the fact that... I think there are two elements which I want to, to distinguish. The fact that that's an 80-20 rule as in many, many events. The fact that more revenue is coming from, you know, for Accra is, 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 is given. The fact that there are people in Accra who are not paying, you know, requires tax structures, right? And if they are in a crowd and you, you want to focus on a crowd, assuming that it is meant to focus on a crowd, why is the e levy not only in a crowd? And why is it not on large and the light as well in a crowd? We'll you see, this, <laughs> this is a levy that is spread all across. And True. everybody, whether in a village or is paying 1.75. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Welcome back to Business Focus. My guest is Seth Emmanuel Tekpe. He is a former finance minister and the founder of PFM Tax. And he's been talking about the e-levy and matters arising. So two questions finally, and we're done. If you found yourself in this situation, with all the conditions prevalent, what would have been your best option other than the e-levy? And the option of going to the IMF, which government says it is not on the table for them. The second one first. If you're not going to the IMF, give us a plan. It's, it's not the desire not to go to the IMF. Then this, he felt it. That's why we started with the homegrown policy, mm -hmm. expecting that oil will come in and we set up those structures to keep fund stabilization. But we're hit 
by, by doing so and other things. So the pragmatic thing to do is that's where you get the money. So if we are not going to the fund and we are not going to, where are we going to get the money? That is the question now. It's as simple as that. That's, as I say, it's a choice, you know, for the government. Provide right? a plan if you are not going exactly. to the IMF. If you are not going to the IMF. I, we don't see a plan. That's what Fitch is saying. I'm not the only one. You know, provide a plan. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the, the, the first one was alternative. Look, it's not for lack of reason that we say that we have done 18 IMF programs. Let's sort it out. What do you do when you have a situation like this? In the homegrown, let me use it, and in other, the IMF, in fact, in the, we use the homegrown to negotiate the ECF, the IMF policy for, for the first time. It didn't come from the other way. You have an expenditure problem. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you are going to get, because it's expenditure exceeding revenue. So you can't assume that you keep the expenditure constant. It's everything in the, the most essential that you don't want to touch them, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can add top up with the revenue. And it's only when you do that, that you reduce the deficit. And then you can go to the market and say, look, I'm doing something about my, my deficit. In the next five years, three years, this is what we are going to do. Then they may have confidence and refinance your debt. Without that, they won't refinance your debt. Then they will give you the money that is debt, you know, that is required in other things. Uh, the world, that's why the World Bank president said, you know, come for debt suspension. We didn't want to go, right? Hmm. And so, and that's because it will come to with some accountability for the money that we have collected for COVID and all those type of things. Right. You know, is that a concern? Right. So, so this is a, and my last point. You see, uh, uh, you know, as far as a way of being a bit harsh, because you spoke about regressive. Let me just quickly in, in thirty seconds. Thank you. We 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 exempted education, health, and other things from VAT, and it became a huge issue. You know that it wasn't enough. Today, right. you are going to be taxing transfers <laughs> for these very things. Mr. <laughs> Setekwe, I thank you so much for your time this evening. There's a lot to talk about. This is just the first of number of engagements we're going to be having. My name is Alfred Okansi. Thank you very much for staying with us on Business Focus. Good evening.